Welcome back to Code Station 33. Today we're going to talk about something called decomposition. That is when you take a problem and break it down into smaller parts to make it easier to solve. It turns out this is one of the best ways to design a computer program to look at a large problem and break it down into pieces. But before we get into a computer problem, let's look at something a little bit simpler. Suppose we had a task of making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. As a problem, that has lots of parts. And we might want to take those parts and break them down into steps. Like maybe one part is getting the bread. So that's one thing. Another thing would be putting the peanut butter on the bread. And then another thing would be putting the jelly on the bread. And then another thing would be completing the sandwich, putting all the parts together. So that's four pieces. Then we can look at the individual pieces and say, hmm, how do we get the bread? Well, we may have to go to the pantry, we may have to look in the pantry for the bread, we may have to undo the packaging, take the bread out, put it on the counter. That's several steps. So now we have how we get the bread taken care of as a separate procedure. We can look at putting peanut butter on the bread. How do we put peanut butter on the bread? Well, assuming we already have the bread out, we open the jar, we scoop out the peanut butter we, with a knife, and then we spread it onto the bread. So that's a set of steps for getting the peanut butter. Then we look at jelly, another set of steps. Open the jar, take the jelly out, spread the jelly onto the bread. And then you might think, well, wait, getting peanut butter onto the bread and getting jelly on the bread is very similar. All we're doing is sending a different product. So we might say, well, let's refactor that into just putting something on bread. And whether it's peanut butter on bread or putting jelly on bread, it's really the same thing. So we now have kind of consolidated that, put peanut butter on bread and put jelly on bread to putting something on the bread and just sending some information as parameters to our little function there. And then finally putting all the pieces together, which is basically just closing the bread together and maybe cutting it and setting it nicely on a plate. So those are, our problem is broken down into steps. When we do that in code, we end up writing what we call pseudocode, which is all of the steps of our complete program and ready to the point where we can write some code as opposed to starting with a blank screen and start typing commands, we can start with a problem and begin to flush out what that problem looks like and make the task into smaller chunks. That's where functions come in really useful. We could say, we're gonna create, for our peanut butter and jelly example, really we're gonna create three functions. One, get bread, two, put product on bread, three, put sandwich together. Three separate functions. And then we can concentrate on writing the procedures and eventually the code for each of those individual functions. Anytime we wanna make a sandwich then, we would just call the three functions and we have thought about our problem in pieces as opposed to thinking about our problem in a much larger kind of situation. So what might this look like for an actual programming problem? Well, suppose we wanted to figure out how to calculate um, the missing side, the longest side, the hypotenuse of a triangle using Pythagorean theorem. Let's say that's our problem. That's the general overreaching problem. Now we want to take that and start thinking about what are the kinds of things we have to do in order to get the computer to do that? Well, we have to collect some information. And then we have to calculate the 
the missing side. And then we have to print the information to the screen. So now we can take these three things and look at further how do we take those three things. Let me tab this in a little bit, kind of give it some structure. And break, decompose those things into smaller things. How do we collect information about the sides? Well, we want to read in two numbers, let's say two numbers. Maybe we want to verify they make a triangle. And store them in variables. And then now let's talk about how we calculate the missing side. So we take the first number and square it. Take the second number and square it. Add the results. Take the square root and that's how we calculate the missing side. And then finally to print the information we have to get the result of the calculation and print to the screen. So we have developed a pretty solid set of commands. It's not code, but it's a set of commands that would give us a good idea about how we might write the program. We call this pseudocode, and pseudocode could be very simple or it could get more and more complex. We might want to take this pseudocode and give it a little bit more information. Maybe want to collect the information about the sides and we want to do that within a function. So instead of collect information about the sides, we might want to create a function to collect information about the sides. And then we got to think about what reads into two numbers. So it might have to send that information back. So it might have to return return the numbers. So there's a function to collect that information. Then to calculate the missing side, again we might want to create a function for that to calculate the missing side, but it might have to get the numbers. Right? It has to have those numbers from somewhere and maybe those are our parameters. And then we take the number square and then add the results and take the square root. And then what do we do with the results? Well, maybe we got to send them back. We got to return the results. And then finally print the information to the screen. Well, that could be as simple as calling the functions. So collect information. and we have them stored in variables. Now, um, this gets a little bit tricky because we can only send one value back at a time, so that might be a little tricky. We'll have to think about how to do that, but that's where we get into code pieces. And then once we collect the information, um, maybe we do it twice. Maybe we only return a number, a number, right? Read in one number. Maybe we do this one at a time. So we're going to collect information twice. Collect information. Then we're going to store it in a variable. So side one. I'm not even worried about types here. Side two. And then we're going to send it the results of the calculation. We're going to send it side one and side two. We're going to send that to our function where it gets the results. We'll just call it the calculation. 
does the calculation. And then finally, we just print that to the screen. So we're just going to print the returned value. And that's it. So now we have created basically the structure for how we would go ahead and write a program. And that's what we're going to do in the next exercise. We're going to look at how we could start writing this program to calculate uh, the hypotenuse of a triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. You could do this with any problem, and I encourage you to think about problems as you're going through life. How do you take a larger problem, maybe like an event, and break it down into smaller pieces? What kind of things would you have to do to prepare that kind of event? That's all we have for today. Oh, here we go. There we go. I'll see you next time.